So Sean, you've been around elite level golf for a very long time. Um, just curious your thoughts on like the role of a parent in supporting their son or daughter in growth. Yeah, I mean, look, it's tricky, right? I'm, I'm a parent, I have two sons, they're 11 and eight. There's no handbook on how to do it properly, okay? I think a lot of us feel guilty that we're not doing it the right way, and then we start comparing ourselves to others and we look around and da 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 da, right? Yeah. So, obviously what happened between Earl Woods and Tiger Woods was very special in, in how he helped kind of grow Tiger's game. Mm. But he was a Green Bray in Vietnam. Okay, so he's a special forces guy. He saw how men were trained, Right. okay? What could really help someone would break someone else. What's so special about that whole thing is Tiger Woods. He's the one who chose to be the greatest of all time. He's the one who chose to hit balls for six hours in 110 degree heat. Mm -hmm. He was the one, so I think parents too often are given, you know, too much, uh, credit and then and then and then too much criticism when their kids play well or don't play well it's the kids who want to play well mm -hmm. or they're not playing well mm -hmm. so i mean what's the ultimate role expressing values and virtues onto your kids so i see it so many times at golf courses watching parents get upset at the ajga officials or getting upset at their kid while he's playing and you know, I would challenge you to take a deeper look from within and where that comes from. I, I know that you love your kid, you want to see them, you know, have the best opportunity to maybe do something you didn't do. But your failures or your inability when you were younger to do something doesn't mean they're going to turn out the exact same way. So I think what happens is it's just this defense system where the player's identity is too connected with how well their son or daughter plays golf. And, and that's just not the right way because a lot of time I see with the parents, the ones I think who kind of misinterpret it the most, they don't even play the game. Mm. So the difficulty is like, you may have been successful building a business, so you know what it takes to some extent. But if you don't understand the game, when the kid is now three putting, you don't understand it because the week before they putted so well, so they think they're not putting any effort into it. Where in most cases they're trying too hard. Mm -hmm. Right? right? And they're blocking up that deep intelligence with them by trying to use the intellect to make a putt because they don't want to see you disappointed. So when they look over and you look disappointed, that's going to do nothing to help them play better. If you try to govern with fear and make it this way and this way and this way, that's worked for a lot of guys and then it doesn't. So what I've seen on tour is a lot of players who got to a certain point with that kind of, you know, you could say treatment, and then they got to a point where they'd made it and thought, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's the last thing I want for my kids is that their passion to be great has to be their passion. You can't force it or inflict it on them. And, and I understand my kids play sports. I get it. But to me, I'm, I'm only going to be upset at my son if he is disrespectful to the ref who's refing the game because within the virtues of how we raise them, um, that's not called for. That's not allowed. So the idea is after the game, if you want to speak to the ref, that's fine. But during the game, being emotional at that point is just going to affect the next, it's just going to affect the next play. So, you know, I, I just really think we need to understand, you know, with the passing of Kobe Bryant and then looking at Michael Jordan's career, those two players missed the most shots in the history of the NBA. So the two greatest missed the most at the highest frequency but they still wanted to keep taking the shot. So when our kids make mistakes and we come down on them, all the best of all time, we're just at the ones who are learning from their mistakes. So the mistake in a way is like a guide of to where you need to improve. So by condemning the mistake, you're really affecting the learning. So, you know, just do your, just do your best to realize, like sit back and talk about it. If you need to go see a therapist, it's only gonna be productive. We know that once you get that way, it doesn't feel good and you feel guilty after it. And that's a terrible frequency of energy. So there's a lot of ways to improve yourself and in doing so, your kid will look at the growth you're making and wanna follow that action um, as well. So remember, you have a huge effect on your kids and just be really aware of that.